What's up, guys? Today, again, still got Miss Olympia and soon to be Mr. Olympia, Terrence. Terrence is always here, same as last sign on. That's boring. Oh, I just Terrence again. Um, but we got a, uh, our normal day for Terrence Night Day is more of a biceps day than anything else, honestly. Kind of boring how we have our arms split up. Uh, but we normally do one back exercise first, three bicep exercises, and then some forearms in there as well, too. Um, but Andrea was doing more of a back day today, so we switched up just a little bit. Did two back movements you'll see to start. So we did a row, we did a pull down. Or we do a row, we do a pull down, um, and then from there move into three bicep movements. Um, and the reason again for that is for Terrence and myself particularly, his arms always need a lot of stimulus. It's really the point where because of the size of Terrence's back, his legs, his arms can basically never be too big. So anyway, um, per the usual, we'll walk you through the movements, give you a couple tips a little here and there. Um, you can look at how jacked Andrea and uh, Terrence look, and you can look how mediocre that I look, and uh, enjoy the workout, guys. Visualizing, you know, especially on the way forward, letting those shoulder blades open up as much as they can. So again, really as you're getting here without your spine doing this, just really letting them stretch, get a little pause. And as you're coming back, just maybe think the teeniest bit more about kind of like you're trying to pull your elbows like down here. So not too far back. So again, with like a more of an upper back row, I think how far can we drive back with this? We're trying to focus maybe a teeny bit more on lats. And so the finish is kind of feel like you're having them like wrap around you to finish. They're not going to wrap around you, but that's kind of your intent with your elbows. So instead of how far back, more kind of like tucking them down at the base of your hip, if that makes sense. And just see how that feels. And honestly, we're gonna get a ton of upper back on this as well too, which is fine. But with that finish, just trying to keep it maybe a little bit more lat. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, looks good. How that feel? Great. It looks good. Oh yeah, really good. <coughs> I feel a little more. I did the bicep a lot when I started to wrap around. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, more than anything too, that's kind of on the finish, you know, because obviously if there's a point, like if you just imagine, obviously your lap pulling this way at the end, like if it keeps pulling your upper arm, like it's gonna pull that direction, right? So that's intent of kind of around and down. We'll keep it on the lat. Whereas if at some point in time again, if the lap pulls this way and you pull your elbow way back here, like obviously it's, it can't pull. Like if actually your lat pulled from here, it would pull your arm back down kind of this position, right? So way back here is better for upper back, rear delts, but not quite as good for lats. What up guys, the lat leash is back and also an Olympia caliber lat. Arnold Champ lat is here to demonstrate you guys why we finish the way that IQ finishing when the focus on a row is more lats. So one, you can see the meat of Terrence's lats, but two, you can hopefully see this lat leash kind of illustrating where your lat fibers and the lower lat fibers run. So when I talk about finishing a row, I say about driving your elbows kind of in and around your side. I always joke if you got that 
you know, the old tattoo down there. Terrence has the I Heart Protein tattoo right down here. Visualize your elbows finishing there. And hopefully it makes sense. If I can track this and pull this as far and as hard as it goes, this is where the arm ends. If he pulls his elbows back as far as they go, literally the lats are pulling this direction. They can't pull back. Only the rear delt can pull back in this position. So again, anatomy doesn't have to be complicated. You don't need a study. You don't need your favorite influencer or somebody with evidence based in their profile to tell you how stuff works. Origin to insertion, that's how muscles and your lats pull. So take this vision of this gloriously beautiful lat, which trust me, yours doesn't look this good, or visualize the lat leash pulling this way and help this hopefully be a cue for understanding why you finish a more lat bias row that way as opposed to driving as far back as you possibly can. <clears throat> What up guys, the lat leash is making a return again. And again, a world-class Olympia caliber lat here to demonstrate the finish of how you should finish a lat pull down. Um, and again, I use a lot of cues about driving your elbow to the floor, elbow to your hip, really just not finishing it far behind you. And I wanna use the lat, le again, lat leash again as a visual of where do your lats actually insert, especially in this case, we're looking to insert down here. Come on, lat, his lat has fallen off. That happens all the time. But the lats basically pull down here and insert at the top of the hips. So just imagine this is how your arm is pulling on your humerus as you're finishing the motion. You just wanna pull everything this direction. If he starts to drive back here, his lat actually wants to pull this way. So again, visualize that lat, imagine your own lat leash pulling down towards the hip, towards where it attaches, and this is where you wanna have intent to finish your pull downs. Again, same thing, you don't have to overcomplicate anatomy. Origin to insertion, that's how those things pull. And hopefully take this visual and use whatever cue helps you feel like you're really contracting and finishing with your lat and not maybe using something else like rear delt just driving back here into no lat land. Thank you. 
What's up guys, four quick tips for you to not tear your biceps while doing preacher curls and also just how to make your preacher curls better. They go hand in hand. Tip number one, have a more vertical bench. So again, some preacher benches are almost a 45 degree angle and what that does is really overload, create more torque in this fully extended elbow position where if you're gonna tear your bicep, that's the position you're most likely to do it in. So the more vertical you go, the less torque there is in this position. I also think that just makes your preacher curls better because it matches what your biceps can do. They are pretty weak in this position, strongest in this position, um, and again, not too strong in this end position as well here too. So having a little bit more of a steep bench really matches that. So easy way to do that. If you don't have a good preacher, tip it, put some stuff under either end, and there you go. You've got a more vertical bench. Find some stuff in your gym. A small child to put under there works just fine. Just kidding, don't do that. So tip number two, this is okay, this is better, this is best. So a lot of issues I think where people tear their biceps is they actually force their hands in a position that they're not capable of going on a straight bar. And even the easy bar can restrict your range of motion a little bit. So use a dumbbell, let that hand go in the position that it's most comfortable in through the whole range of motion. And again, I think you're less likely to end up having a tear. And also in my opinion, just gonna work better for bicep stimulus anyway. Next thing, tip number three is control your end ranges. So a lot of people, again, just have their end ranges are a collision. They literally just bounce. So your muscle loses tension, all that load goes on connective tissue, the muscle relax, pop, tear a tendon. Tip number four, build your tolerance slowly. Same as anything else. If you actually do this exercise under control, even with these different implements, if you never make big jumps, you're only making small progressions, keep in control week to week, it's very unlikely you're gonna exceed your tolerance and tear your biceps. So you should be log booking and doing all that good stuff anyway. So there's four tips to keep those biceps intact doing preacher curls and also should just help you get some better biceps along the way. Enjoy. What's up guys? Four tips, four-ish tips for a better incline cable curl. Tip number one is figure out what the best position you want to be in to further lengthen that bicep and make sure you're not going so far that you're going to hurt yourself. So as you're in the position, take your elbow completely straight, extend that upper arm behind you, wherever you naturally stop. That's gonna be a good position. Don't let the weight go further. Tip number one and a half is keep that upper arm in the, that position the whole time. So as you're curling, don't let it move. Don't let the weight stretch it back further. Or as you're trying to bring and curl the weight up, make sure you don't raise it up with your front delt. Tip number two and three, kind of go hand in hand and make sure you have a good profile matching what your biceps are capable of doing. So when you're in this extended position, the first position, so this is tip number two, is make sure that your upper arm and the cable are pretty much in a straight line. So you can see again, if I'm looking at imagining my arm making a straight line, it's pretty close to in line with that cable, meaning I wouldn't want it here. So I wouldn't want it basically a 90 degree angle. I would rather make it like this, which is gonna have a little less torque in this fully lengthened position. That way when I'm in my midpoint, I'm kind of overloading the exercise, I have the most torque where I'm the strongest. And check, check number three, tip number three, is as you curl all the way into the finish, you want that cable really on the arm. So as I go from here, cable is pointing in a straight line, right around here is, it's closer to a 90 degree angle. And as I finish full elbow flexion, I want that cable actually touching my forearm. Again, as that cable gets closer to that elbow joint, it's gonna be less torque. So that matches what your biceps are capable of do doing. Not as much torque here, most torque here, less torque here. And tip number four is do them seated, like I'm doing. Nothing inherently wrong with doing them standing, but if you do them seated, it's gonna keep your form more strict and have your biceps doing more work and less of your body contributing. So enjoy those four tips.
All right, guys, so that's the workout. Um, again, just a little bit of context. Some people always ask about volume. Um, so again, volume was, uh, again, pretty individual dependent on here. I'm pretty much one working set on everything. My goal is really more than anything maintenance, grow a teeny bit when I'm sleeping. Uh, Andrea, for the back work, I pushed her for a little bit more volume than myself or Terrence, because she can tolerate it where she's at right now too. And again, just because we hadn't trained back before. So again, making sure that form is really on point and not really trying to push these very kind of lower rep um, sets very heavy or all the way too close to failure. Um, so she probably did about three working sets on each. Terrence did two working sets on the row, one working set on the pull down because we typically don't have that. And then going through the bicep movements, two working sets each on those for Terrence. Again, same thing, one working set for me on all of those. Uh, they are five weeks out right now. I think we'll maybe have a little bit of Terrence posing at the end of this video as well too, and we just kind of ooh and ah at that. Um, but if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, feelings, are looking to make some friends, the comment section is the place for you to do all of those things. So hit me down below, and I hope you guys enjoy this one. Peace.